Hey everyone, my name is Jake and today we are going to be looking at some malicious compliance stories. So sit back, relax and enjoy. Instruct me to cancel my subscription instead of working with me? Done. I have purchased subscriptions for an anti-malware service from a well-known provider for a couple of years now. This provider's pricing is a fixed rate, e.g. $50 for one device and many additional devices at a reduced price, e.g. plus $12 per additional device. So using that hypothetical rate, you will be charged $50 for covering one device, $62 for covering two devices, $74 for covering three, etc. Initially, in my university freshman years, I only have had one laptop, so I have purchased support for one device only. Since then, in late 2018, I have built myself a desktop, and my girlfriend's laptop requires maintenance and care, so I added coverage for two additional devices. I didn't pay too much attention at the time, stupid me. The supposed added coverage is not adding $24 on top of my current subscription. Instead, the company is adding an entirely new subscription on top of my current one, so I am paying $62 on top of my previous $50 or $112 total per year. Fast forward a year to about a week ago. I reinstalled my girlfriend's laptop and started looking for the license key for the anti-malware subscription I purchased when I stumble upon the holiday special of 25% off that the provider is offering. Under the current pricing, the basic rate is $37.50, while the subscription for three devices is only $55.50 which is exactly half of what I then realized I was paying to them altogether. I opened a support ticket with them asking to at least merge the two subscriptions into one, and if possible provide the holiday pricing to me as I have been a loyal customer for several years now, and is currently overpaying them for three device subscription for two years now. The subscription renewed a few months back. I understand it is the holiday season, so I waited patiently for a representative to get back to me. Yesterday morning, after a week of waiting for a response, I have received the following update, in its exact formatting. This is an automated message. If the solution provided below does not help to resolve your issue, please reply to this email and an agent will reply back as soon as possible. Company subscribers can sign up and log into my account in order to manage purchase subscriptions, see available devices, deactivate licenses, and find out which devices software is already installed on. To deactivate the automatic renewal of your subscriptions, follow the instructions below. Number 1. Log in to company website. My account. Number 1. If you don't have an account, follow this link for instructions on how to set up your account. Number 1. Under the Payment tab, select the subscription you want to manage. Number 2. Select Cancel Subscription to turn off the automatic renewal of your subscription. Note. Selecting Cancel Subscription will only turn off the automatic renewal of your subscription and won't invalidate your key. You will be protected until the end of your current coverage period. Thanks. I immediately replied to them. So, the automated solutions suggest to me to cancel all my subscriptions and go elsewhere? In which December 30th should not be an official holiday here in North America, and a support representative should have replied to me after seeing that they are potentially losing a customer. Unfortunately, that did not happen, so this morning I followed their instruction and cancelled both of my subscriptions. One of the subscriptions actually did not have a cancel subscription. Instruction lied to me which forced me to go to my PayPal to cancel my billing agreement. Oh, and edit. To answer a few concerns commonly found, first being why I am using another software when Windows Defender is enough. 
I work in the IT industry as a network professional, specializing in security. So it is more or less a P for me to keep my devices and accounts safe as possible. Also, I do actively use my devices for finance related tasks on top of online banking. So it would be better to prevent an attack than to scramble for what to do after something went wrong. I do like how Microsoft improved the Windows Defender, though over the times I have found a couple of things slipping through that this software catches. Another point is why I am paying for this when free software is available. This software in question is a premium version of free software that provides active protection and monitoring. Other free software may have usage restrictions, bundleware, and other limitations that turn me away. Someone commented, the second most expensive thing in the world is a first class customer support system. The most expensive thing in the world is a second class customer support system. McNary's law of customer support. Which is so true because if you miss stuff like this because you went for the second class, then you're going to lose a lot more money than paying for the first class. Comcast has the same data caps, 1 terabyte per month, regardless of speed or time of day without accounting for actual network impact? Fine, I'll cause much more strain on your network than before. December is always a high bandwidth month for me, as many private trackers I'm on have a free leech, which means I download a bunch of stuff and people are leeching off what I have much more during the holidays. I also have family and friends over and connect to the network with phones, Netflix, streaming, etc. Last month, I called Comcast to see if they had any faster or higher data allowance plans, as there are much more bandwidth intensive things, and I have used more bandwidth this year than previous. They had several tiers, of which I think I'm on their mid-grade one that they keep changing the speeds over time and never get their full actual speed anyways. They told me that the one terabyte data cap was the same regardless of the tier, so if I got the fastest speed, I could burn through that cap in a day and be charged extra, even though it's already costing more than the lower tier. They told me that the data cap does not account for peak hours, as it counts the same as 3am as it does during the day. Also, you get two courtesy months per year where you can go over without overage charge, and it doesn't matter how much, whether it's 1GB or 10,000GB. Basically, I've made a habit of being a good steward of a network I'm on and do things like throttle speed on torrents during prime time and let them run at night instead. Now that doesn't matter, and I can't get anything better, even if I pay more for higher speed. Ok, fine, I'll keep the same speed rate I have and use my courtesy month this month and make it well worth it. I do have to throttle torrents at 8 megabytes per second down and 5 megabytes per second up. That's bytes, not bits. Because if I let it max out, the traffic shaping happens when I'm at 1 to 2 megabytes per second for a while. I decide to leave torrents up all day instead of just at night, thus eating up tons of expensive primetime data. I make sure to stream everything I can in 4K and leave it on all day in the background. I'm making the most the free leech on my private trackers to its max potential, getting season packs and updating all my stuff in 1080p or 2160p. I got a few games taking hundreds of gigabytes and made sure to download those during prime time instead of overnight as well. Now that the holidays are about over, I called up Comcast again and asked for the next lower speed tier. Why? Well, it's easier not to hit the data cap and I will only have one courtesy month left. So I saved an extra $10 a month for the same data cap. Don't even need anything more until next December. And now I don't do time of day throttling as courtesy to the network anymore. 
This month, I used 14 terabytes of data down, 5 terabytes up, where I previously only used about 300 gigabytes a month total, mostly at night. Now I have plenty of time to binge watch all those favorite shows saved in 2160 and saved some money. Thanks Comcast. Luckily we don't have Comcast over here, but I'm pretty sure it's like the equivalent to BT and I have heard a lot of bad stuff about Comcast so I'm kinda glad we don't have it. <laughs> she told me to, so I did. In elementary school, I attended a private Catholic K-8 school, paid for by my grandparents. However, I wasn't Catholic, and the school I attended had an unwritten rule of only Catholics admitted to the school. Really not sure how I was allowed in. I suspect my grandparents used their influence and the fact that they were very wealthy to talk the school into allowing me as they were rated the best academic school within a hundred miles. This school was very, very religious, and while I skirted the first two years with little issue, this took place when I was seven and in second grade at this school. As tradition, it was time to have first communion. For those who are unfamiliar, Catholics don't start taking communion at mass until they reach grade two or a certain age around there where they learn the meaning of communion and practice a special first communion ceremony to be taken place during mass in front of the rest of the school and our families. This usually means we stand in a very long single file line as each kid takes communion for the first time and goes to stand in a certain place afterward. The kids wear special white clothing for the occasion, resembling an outfit for a wedding. This was the first indication to any of my classmates that I was not Catholic like them, as I was not allowed to participate with the rest of them in First Communion. It took a fit thrown by my family to allow me to dress up and join them in this occasion, but the school put their foot down on the actual communion and I was not allowed to take the communion when I got up to the front of the altar during the mass. So all week during rehearsal, my teacher helped us practice and taught me to do an arm crossed over chest move so they would give me a blessing instead of communion. I hated this, as all the kids noticed and told their parents a girl wasn't taking communion, which their parents told them I wasn't Catholic, so I really didn't believe. So I started getting subjected to you're going to go to hell bullying. Now for the malicious compliance. The day of mass arrived and my teacher was running around like a madwoman, making sure everything was perfect and everyone was in their place. As a result, she wasn't around when my class was called to get in the long single file line for the communion. The people giving out the bread and juice for communion knew that one of the kids wasn't supposed to receive it. But my teacher didn't have time to point out who it was, me, and I easily blended in. My entire immediate family came for support, even though this really wasn't important to any of us. I reached to the front of the line and I'm sent over to one of the five spots in front of the altar to receive communion. I find myself in front of a teacher who doesn't know me, nor I her. I start to do the crossover chest move my teacher taught me when the teacher sighs and whispers, Ah, hold out your hands, intending to give me communion. Instead of arguing, I silently held my hands out with a smile and went through the process I watched my classmates practice, then nearly skipped over to the spot I was supposed to go to. I turned to see my teacher giving me a stare that I'm certain would have scorched me on the spot. After mass, she found me and began to lecture me as my family walked over, letting me know that I insulted the sacred Catholic religion by breaking the rules given to me and what made me think I could do such a thing. In front of my family and some of my classmates, I pointed towards the teacher who gave me communion and said, 
I was going to do it, but she told me to hold my hands out, so I did. Hearing that, my mum jumped in and defended me, saying that I had been raised to always listen to what a teacher says. My teacher attempted to mutter back that I should have just followed what I had been told first, scowled an apology, and stalked away to the teacher I pointed to. My parents took me to my favorite restaurant afterwards to celebrate and laugh about my sass, as they weren't fans of the school either. I ended up lasting until fifth grade before finally leaving. I think my teacher warned the others about me though, because after that I didn't have to go to mass, confession, or anything Catholic related during school time after that, and was just sent to the library instead. The primary school that I went to, or elementary school, the American equivalent, was very Christian, but it wasn't like very pushy Christian. Like we did all the Christian kind of things, but no one ever said, oh, you have to do this, you have to do that, etc. So when I read about these really pushy Catholic Christian, anything like those ones, I always get really confused at why do they have to push it so much? Hey everyone, I hope you're all having a really good day and that you enjoyed that video. If you want to see more videos like it, then click on screen right now. And if you never want to miss out on a video, then hit subscribe. But I will see you all very soon.